Hello, Alabama family and uh, all who may be watching. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the word on this Monday morning, um, the 8th of February. And um, trust that you had a wonderful weekend. Pray you enjoyed uh, being in God's house yesterday with God's people. Today we come down to the six of the seven churches, the Church of Philadelphia. And uh, notice... Um, it says here in uh, chapter 6, um, um, beginning in um, let me find where it starts at, I'm sorry, um, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David. He that openeth, that no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept thy word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillow in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write up on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write up on him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The uh, meaning of the sixth church, the Church of Philadelphia, uh, needs no um, explanation. Uh, it means, um, uh, you know, brotherly love there. Uh, the Church of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania is called the City of Brotherly Love. And um, uh, this uh, church uh, is a church uh, that comes out of uh, the um, uh, Church of Sardis. Uh, you remember, not that it was in the Church of Sardis, I don't mean that, but um, time frame wise, uh, uh, history wise, um, uh, this church is between 17 and 50 and uh, 1900 to 19 and 50. Uh, and um, you remember in the letter to the church of Sardis, it was a church that had a name that it lived, but in God's sight, it was a church that was dead. And um, uh, the church of Philadelphia is like a person who um, is sick, but is coming back uh, to new strength. He's getting his strength back um, uh, and um, uh, he is going to uh, be a church that um, uh, Jesus says he will set before him an open door and no man can shut it. And um, um, what he means by this is that um, the Church of Philadelphia represents the church history from about 1750, as we already said. And what happened uh, uh, then, beginning in that period of time, uh, the uh, church broke off. You remember the Sardis Church was a church, Escape One came out of the, um, uh, during the, between the, um, uh, Reformation. They broke off from the uh, Catholic or Papal Church um, and uh, 15 and uh, um, 20 and um, uh, through Luther and uh, Wycliffe and Tyndall and Calvin and Armenian and others. And uh, but they really, uh, uh, while they uh, introduced again the uh, salvation of justification by faith, they uh, cease to be evangelistic. And what is going to happen in the Church of Philadelphia and what God means by I set before you an open door? It, the church is going to come alive with great revivals. Um, beginning back 
<coughs> excuse me, beginning back as early as 1739 with George Whitefield from England, uh, followed by John Wesley, and then later uh, by um, um, uh, Finney and Moody and um, other uh, other great evangelists and. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And um, uh, missionary, um, the uh, uh, Church of England began to send out missionaries. William Carey um, went to uh, India as uh, early, and uh, I was looking at a date here. Um, um, uh, 17 and, uh, uh, 1793, William Carey uh, went to India and later Hudson Taylor to Burma and uh, Livingston to Africa and uh, since then uh, uh, we've gone to Korea to Japan and to uh, South America and uh, so forth until today there are few countries in the world where missionaries cannot go and um, uh, in those cases it's because of the uh, government of the country and not because of the um, uh, conditions and so forth or the fact that uh, uh, they're not willing or able to get there. But uh, the Church of Philadelphia, it was a church that came alive uh, through revivals, through missionary activities and so forth. Jesus goes on to say that um, uh, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. That word temptation uh, may be translated trial or it may be translated um, 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 testing and so forth. Um, this uh, Greek word here covers all three of those, testing, trials, or temptations. But Jesus says there's that hour, a, a great temptation that's going to come up on the world such as never has been before nor ever will be accurate. Now, down through church history, uh, saints of God have been persecuted um, uh, from as early as 70 uh, A.D., clear down to, um, uh, and even before 70 A.D., Stephen's was stoned. First, there were the Jews that uh, persecuted them, and then there was the Roman government that persecuted them, and then there was the papal system that persecuted them. And so all down throughout church history, saints of God have been persecuted. But this is not the great persecution that's going to come up on the whole world uh, that Jesus said. It is such as it never has been, never will be. It is a persecution that will come up on the nation of Israel to purge them, as we've said in, in days past. And it is a persecution that is going to bring a um, the wrath of God down upon all of the ungodly uh, and uh, so uh, the Church of Philadelphia represents that period of time in church history uh, between the Sardis age and the, um, the uh, Laocian age, between 1750 and 1900 to like 1950. And um, let me uh, say, uh, keep in mind that um, that which happened at the Church of Ephesus didn't totally, I mean, everything didn't just stop and start. Um, that which happened at Ephesus, uh, the um, the uh, hating of the Nicolaitans spread on over to the church of Pergamos and then became fully embedded in the church of Thyatira and uh, the church of Sardis. And, um, uh, and then um, uh, that which uh, all throughout that period of time, there were some true saints of God who uh, kept the faith and so forth. But um, the papal system so dominated uh, Christianity till um, it uh, kept the word of God from the laity. And only as men like Tyndall and Wycliffe and others began to translate the Bible did the church begin to come alive and, and did uh, the true doctrine of justification by faith, which had been lost, uh, come to fruits and again and uh, spill over into the Church of Philadelphia. And uh, the Church of Philadelphia will spill over 
into the Church of Laodicea, as we will see uh, in uh, tomorrow as we discuss the Church of Laodicea. Uh, the, uh, another thing that it says there, he told the Church of Philadelphia uh, to be faithful and let no man steal your crown. In other words, for the true child of God, uh, those who are looking for his appearing, uh, Paul says there will be for them a crown of life. Uh, but um, that's for those who continue, those who are faithful, those who endure to the end, that shall inherit all things. And how important it is that we don't listen to false doctrine, that we don't let uh, uh, you know others deceive us, and uh, nor do we let the cares of this life, nor the um, uh, love of pleasure, uh, draw us away from Christ, uh, thus causing us to lose that crown of life that is ours uh, if we but stay faithful, as the Church of Philadelphia was doing. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word on this uh, Monday, and I hope that uh, this will be a great week for you, and uh, it will be if you spend each day blessing someone and uh, letting God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful Monday.